questions, needs, concerns, comments, etc. All right. So now we have mentioned in the past that we talked about the law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed. The total amount of energy involved in a system will remain constant from the beginning of your experiment to the end of the experiment. That is always true. The total amount will always be the same, even if it transforms into a state that you can't really see or utilize anymore, or rather observe or utilize anymore. Now specifically, if if an object is involved in a system and there is no outside force doing work on that particular object, then additionally, the total mechanical energy of that object will remain the same from the beginning of your experiment to the end of your experiment as long as no outside work is done on that object. For example, if I was to throw something into the air, then as soon as it leaves my hand and ignoring air resistance, nothing outside of that object does work on it until it hits the ground. So in the act of me throwing something, I impart forms of mechanical energy into that object. And as long as nothing else does work on it before it hits the ground, then the total mechanical energy level of the object at the state where it leaves my hand will remain constant all the way through the air until it hits the floor. So mechanical energy, total lump sum of all forms of mechanical energy in an object, remain constant for as long as no outside work is done on an object. That energy can change states, as we'll see in a minute, but the total remains true. Now, let us examine a, state, a situation where that changing of states occurs. Let's say, and I don't advise doing this yourself, you take a 10 kilogram bowling ball and throw it straight upwards. Uh, we know the mass of this bowling ball, and we're going to throw it upwards at 4.5 meters per second. And we eventually want to figure out what the height of that, uh, of that bowling ball will be at its maximum. We want to know the highest point it will rise to after leaving our hand. And we've already done questions like this. This is technically a projectile motion. We have tracked and solved for similar things using the Fantastic Four equations, just using movement. And those could still work. I, but I now want to show you how it can be done using energy. Everything in this semester is connected, and there's going to be multiple ways to work some questions. And so tack, we're going to tackle this similar, familiar situation using what we now know about energy to show the other method. So, let's list what we know and what we don't know. The ball has a mass of 10 kilograms. Its initial velocity is 4.5 meters per second upwards. And I'm going to go ahead and state that once it leaves our hand, that that starting height is our height of zero. This is our origin. We only care about how things change from there. We want to know how much higher it rises from there. We want to solve for HF, which will be the height above our hand that it rises to. And some additional pieces of information that we can pull from the description. When you, when, whenever you toss an object directly upwards, what is its vertical velocity at the moment it reaches its apex? Zero. For the split second it's at its max height, its velocity is technically zero. So we, all, we know Vf in addition to knowing Vi. 
Additionally, because this takes place, well, it doesn't say that this doesn't take place on Earth, so you can safely assume that this does take place on Earth. So g is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. So, to do this question in terms of the energy level of the ball, once the ball leaves your hand, it will have some total amount of mechanical energy, the energy that you gave it when you threw it. And once it's in the air, as long as nothing does work on the ball while it's rising, its mechanical energy at the height, the total, should be the same as the amount it initially had. That energy will be changing states, but it will still have the same total. Now, don't trip on chords. The two forms of mechanical energy that we, the only two that we've learned, the only two that we care about for right now, are kinetic and GPE. And so when looking at total mechanical energy of an object, we need to look at how much of both types the object has at each point in time. So total mechanical energy initial will be the sum of kinetic energy initial and GPE initial. And we'll look at both types when the object first leaves our hand. We will also look at both types once the object reaches that highest point. Before we do that though, just concept question. When you, if you throw an object straight upwards, the second it leaves your hand, what is the primary form of energy that that object would have as soon as it leaves your hand? A little louder. I heard someone say it. Kinetic. Kinetic. If it leaves your hand, it is moving. You threw it with a velocity, it's going to have kinetic energy. And if we consider the height of our hand to be zero, it wouldn't have any GPE compared to your hand. But at the end of this process, once it's risen, what is the primary form of energy that it will have? GPE. It will now be some height above your hand, and it won't be moving for that split second. So as objects, as projectiles rise through the air, that is a process that naturally transforms kinetic energy into GPE. And we're going to prove that with math. Looking at the initial kinetic energy of this bowling ball, we've got one half times the ball's mass times its initial velocity. Make sure you are only squaring the 4.5 and not the whole formula. Then, if we set the height of our hand as zero, the GPE, immediately, after, immediately as it's leaving our hand, at the very beginning of this process, GPE will be mass of 10 times 9.8. We're not going to plug in the negative because there's kind of an imaginary absolute value around this one. <coughs> Bless you. Times our starting height which in this frame of reference is zero. Compared to our hand, the ball doesn't have any GPE yet. So that whole term is just going to become zero. But at the end state, once we've risen, the kinetic energy final at that high point will be one half times 10 times our final velocity at that high point, which is zero. And the GPE up there will be 10 times 9.8 times whatever our final height is. GPE initial and KE final both fall away to zero in this situation, which shows directly 
the initial kinetic energy is going to transform directly into the final GP. So as projectiles rise, Ke will perform a one-to-one -one transformation into GP. And the reverse is true when projectiles fall. If you start with GPE and no Ke, as you fall, the GPE will turn into Ke, and right before you hit the ground, you'll have a maxed out velocity and no GPE left. So the processes are direct reverses of each other, rising and falling. To approach our final answer, these two whole things are going to become zero because of the zero in each of them. So that's just going to leave us with 1 half times 10 times 4.5 squared equals 10 times 9.8 times h. All we have to do is solve for h, which I'm called out. I think it's about a meter approximately. 1.033. Say it again, sir. 1.033. 1.033. Thank you very much. Does anyone disagree with that number? All right. So, for physical systems where work where outside work is not being performed, then the initial mechanical energy will remain constant and become the final mechanical energy, but Ke and GPE will probably trade and change throughout the process. It, this process does go on over time. If we had instead examined like the halfway point, then we would have half as much GPE and we would only have developed so much Ke. Or, Sorry, reverse that. When something is rising, if you look, if this is its maximum and you kind of examine the energy states in the middle, its Ke will have only half diminished and its GPE will only have half developed. So it's kind of a sliding scale of as one shrinks, the other grows from max to min as you're going through the process. And again, the reverse happens when it's falling. If you know your starting height, then you could solve for the final velocity of the object the moment before it hits the ground and goes splat. How's this feel for now? At least one thumbs up. Some nodding. Another thumbs up. Nice, nice. So, um, that's about the end of it today. Any questions before I turn it loose? All right. I will be posting the chapter 5 homework for you to begin. It won't be new for a little while, so uh, it won't be due this week. Don't worry about it. If you start off, please, it will involve work, energy, etc. Next time, we will look at some situations where friction does exist and what that means for the math. We can probably start exploring new additional energy types. Um, oh, actually, yes, new energy types and power. So, come prepared for that, work on the homework, etc., etc. And if you have any questions, and have a wonderful day. No lab this week, enjoy your afternoon.